laboratory. We're once again in the safe room where I've, I've deposited everything except for the shotgun shells, the shotgun, the first aid spray, the MO disc, and the laboratory key because we know that we need the MO disc. And I'm certain that the laboratory key will be very helpful. Hope you're doing well, by the way. Let's try to go ahead and get past these zombies. Although this one's really turned in the corner. That's, that's quick. Oh, camera almost screwed me up there pretty bad. Did we have an MO disc to read in? I think it was in the bottom room. I don't think it was here, but maybe there, maybe it was. We'll do a double check. Yeah, I don't think so. I guess uh, it wouldn't be green if we missed an MO, MO disc section. If we had the ability to still put an MO disc into something, we probably uh, it probably wouldn't be green. I'm sure this guy will not be able to barf on us. Yep. Always a good feeling when you know you're not going to get barfed on at any given moment. And once again, thank goodness for. Uh, the fact that we were able to take the head off of this zombie. This would be a bad, a bad room if we had a crimson head to deal with. Yeah, his body is just completely gone. Alright, so let's go ahead and use the ammo disc on this. And now we see what the purpose of that is. It's to release the, uh, the locks on the door. Transmitting the passcode seems to have unlocked something. And unfortunately, it's one MO reader per MO disk, so we have to find the other two. That's completely cleared now. So let's see where our laboratory key gets us. The two obvious doors are the ones to the right here around the bend. So we'll try those first. See how far it gets us. You use the key for the power area. Now I want to test. Yeah, I think these, yeah, I thought those were the only two uses for that key. So we just freed up an inventory slot by opening up both of them at once. I'm going to go back really quickly and uh, grab the other two MO discs. I was trying to remember if that room was that one. Oh, geez. Camera, please. Oh, geez. I should have just committed. Yeah, that transition right there is really messing me up. Because I remembered that, uh, I just had to see that first screen to remember that there was another MO reader there. So rather than get to the end and then regret not having it, I'm just going to go ahead and pick up both of them at once. Especially since we now have uh, more inventory space after we discarded the laboratory key. still leaves us with three slots, so not too bad. And we are getting pretty good luck in this room as far as uh, ignoring and avoiding the zombies go. use of the stair glide to avoid the, the vomit there. All right. Okay, so that's where we're going to go next then. All right, this, this zombie is the bane of my existence. That went a lot more smoothly though. Now, 
if I remember correctly. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and push this out. Oh, and there's some shotgun shells right there. Perfect. But I'm actually going to climb up here first and then go through this air duct. This one too, but I think this is the one I'm looking for. Yes, it is. Okay. Hop down here. The shelf is full of various antitoxins. Here's a battery pack and another ammo disc or security system passcode transmission device. So let's go ahead and use our second one now. to see that green light. Transmitting the passcode seems to have unlocked something. And that's a chimera. <laughs> They're very fast and very nasty. But nothing too bad to deal with as long as we have a lot of shotgun shells. I do wonder if, if we had Richard's assault shotgun that probably would have... Oh, hello. Probably would have died in one hit. I wonder if they're gonna oh it's still alive. Alright, well I'm not in the not in the uh, I'm not interested in wasting a lot of my shotgun bullets, so is there more to pick up in this room? No, we're good. Okay, so there were probably just two there, but yeah, the reason we pushed the uh, the shelves out of the way here was so we could push it out of the way here without uh, push them this way without having to climb all the way through again. I think, anyway. I put both, of, in all of my playthroughs, I pushed them both times, so in that order, so I could be wrong, but I'm assuming that's what it is. Okay, and do I want to go through this door yet? I think it might be the only place we can go. Yeah, because those that staircase locked door is the what we need with the ammo disc, so yeah, we'll go ahead and go through here. Sounds like a plan. This looks like operation room. It's rusted shut. That's a shame. Is it on the map? It is. It's just locked. There's another zombie. But uh, I'm going to go through this door instead. Because he seems pretty easily avoidable. It's another save room, which is just awesome. And it even comes with some ink ribbons for us. A whole three of them. Combine that with our one and deposit the first aid spray we have here. How many magnum bullets do we have? 18. You know, just for fun factor. I'm going to put away the shotgun and pull out the magnum. Even if just because... <laughs> even if just for the fact that it looks really cool. Look at that. Alright, all right, I forgot to take out the ink ribbons. Also, some grenade shells on the ground. Let me pick those up before I save. Because I can already see myself needing to reload and then having to pick those up every time. The refrigerator isn't turned on. Various types of chemicals. The labels are too grimy to read. You can't tell what's inside. Oh yeah, deposit these. There are other unused grenade shells. Yeah, 24 of those. It, it is pretty crazy how much ammo you end, and healing items you end up stockpiling when you avoid, when you try to avoid all the enemies instead of killing them. I can only imagine how many crimson heads we would have had to deal with in this playthrough if I played it that way. 
Okay, that door is shut. I guess we'll, we'll check out that path. See what's waiting for us. It appears to be the control panel for the elevator. Press the switch, yes. Doesn't seem to be getting any power. So an elevator without power is another thing we'll have to. Oh, hello. I forgot there were two zombies there. All right, let's try it over here. steps fall and it's because there's a chimera right there but we don't need to worry about him and speaking of chimera yeah there is an awful lot of them but here's our next ammo disc let's blast him away Actually, we took its head off, but it was still able to finish that attack. That's pretty great. Alright, and there's our third and final ammo disc, meaning that door is now unlocked. So we'll have to make our way back there eventually after we take a look around here. The way that the uh, these rooms are laid out, the chimeras jumping down is scary, but they're hardly an issue because they typically always uh, end up behind you rather than in front of your path. There's no power to the main end elevator. Start it up, I'm sure. Oh, the system won't initialize. It appears to need some kind of fuel to get started. This one appeared in front of our path, but then immediately ran away from us. So yeah, nothing we can do in that room just yet, but glad we took a look around it. So I was able to find where the ammo disc went. And free up the most precious commodity we have, which is inventory space. There's another, yeah, there's another path we didn't go. So I'm going to actually reset the spawns here by going through this door. Because those chimeras are not fun. Oh, hello, buddy. How you doing? Just hanging out. Me too. steadily. Could this be some kind of furnace? Oh, in case you're curious, yeah, no, no crimson chimeras, no crimson head chimeras to deal with. Ex warning extremely sensitive to shock and warning fuel may explode if shaken or jarred. A refueling device for the power room. It's not working right now because there's no fuel. There's an empty capsule, which we will take and of course we remember where that refueling room was at the bottom of the stairs. So we'll go ahead and take it back there. Excuse me, zombie. Zombie came out weird because I, uh, I didn't know if I wanted to call him a zombie or a zimbo. So we are trying to get to the bottom of the stairs, although we did unlock that door with the ammo disc, so let's head there instead. And I remembered to commit to my analog stick movement there so I didn't get grabbed. Alright, let's pull these levers. Levers for releasing the door locks. It looks usable. Pull it. satisfying beep noise when we pull it. Each one. And that's all three levers pulled and the door unlocked. And an already clear 
familiar hallway, a lot of stairs to go down. What is this actually? Is it, this looks like a, I guess it's just a panel. It's very, very dark. I can't actually make it out. Jill? Chris, you're alive! Of course I'm alive. Jill, there's something big going down, and I don't think we're part of the equation. I have to get you out of here. It won't open! Wait, I'll be back to get you out. Okay, no sightseeing though. And finally there's Chris. And unfortunately we went through all that trouble with the MO discs. To unlock that door, only to have it lead to a hallway with another locked door. So we'll have to figure out another way to free Chris. And if you're curious, if you're playing as Chris, it's just uh, Jill is behind the uh, is behind that door instead of Chris. The differences between the playthroughs are very, very minor in this game. Although you do get to interact with different characters depending on the uh, so even though the events are the same, the characters you interact with are different, and that does make it worth replaying, in my opinion. And also, it's worth pointing out that the MO discs, two of them, if you recall, are in the laboratory itself, but the third one, the first one we got, involved a lot of steps in the, in the mansion itself with getting the different emeralds to put into the tiger's... Uh, the tiger eye, so it's just, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty mean, honestly, because on a blind playthrough, you probably wonder, if you miss that tiger, uh, puzzle, you're probably wondering where the third MO disc, because two of them were in the laboratory, so you'd assume that the third one was also in the laboratory, but nope. Capcom likes to, uh, likes to mess with its players like that, anyway. Uh, we need to go to the refueling room, which is right here, I think. Yes, it is. Let's go ahead and use the empty capsule here. Oh, I think we just have to interact with it. Looks like a refueling device. Yes, yeah, set the capsule into place, yes. We got the fuel supply capsule. The main ingredient of this fuel appears to be nitro compound. Running could result in a fatal explosion. So yeah, we're going to be on tank controls moving very slowly. I believe how this works is every action you do has a chance, a percentage chance, of triggering an explosion and instantly killing you. Uh, depending on what gun you shoot, I think Magnum is probably up there along with the grenade launcher. It uh, has a higher chance, while the normal handgun has a lower chance. And every, I want to say every second of running, like full second of running, has uh, a chance as well. But it actually might just be if you run for longer than a few seconds, because I think I've seen some people say it's fine to... Uh, sort of tap the run button like this, but uh, I'm not going to risk it by doing it a lot, so only if I really need to avoid a zombie. Which I might have to coming up here, because we have to get through some pretty uh, rough... Oh, that's death, probably. No, it's not. Okay, we're good. All right, we, we've already avoided disaster, so I thought being grabbed by a zombie would be an instant, uh, instant death, but apparently not. So thank you to the developers on that one. Uh, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to make a save right now. Obviously, it's, uh, it's the way that some people play the game entirely without the free movement, so uh, tank controls really aren't that slow, comparatively. Alright, let's save. Come 
increments left. We have two, yeah, so I think, I think 30 total increments in the game. I don't think there are any more hiding for us, but could be wrong about that. Okay, now getting past this zombie might be an issue. Alright, thankfully they stepped up onto the, onto the step, so it became a vomit rather than a grab. And we did kill that chimera right there, so... Okay, I, I was expecting another one to maybe spawn, but we're good, we're good. No stress here. And just like that. Oh, it's not necessary. Do we have to interact with it? Okay. Set the capsule into place. And now we should be able to run to the other room where we put in the third MO disc and turn on the elevator. Hello. Goodbye. Oh, jeez, I almost missed the door. <laughs> Which means I was almost ready to take some damage there, but narrowly avoided doing so. Hello, goodbye. Quick wrap around these these fences here. There's no power to the main elevator started up, yes, and we don't get an error message this time. Those manticores are pissed, and I called them manticores chimera. That's because I was thinking, I was thinking about saying I really hope they're actually called chimeras and not manticores or something, because I could be wrong about that, but I think that's what they're called. I'm trying to figure out what I'm missing in this room. That's okay. I'll figure it out later. something in that hallway. That's fine. Because I could just kill the chimeras, but I do want to also conserve my uh, magnum ammo. It appears to be the control panel for the elevator. Press the switch. Sure. This is an atmospheric hallway with the, the bloom lighting being used to great effect here. And we can't talk to Barry, so I guess we'll just press on. Oh, this door sound effect is great. Uh, I've mentioned uh, shared sound libraries in games before, but and this is very random, but just something my brain takes note of for some reason. When we go through this door, the sound effect that plays when it opens up is the exact same as a door on a spaceship in the game Xenosaga. So there's my uh, pretty irrelevant random trivia for this door right here. Thank you. What do you know? Oh, don't blame Barry for everything. I hear that his better half and two lovely daughters will be in danger if he doesn't do everything I tell him to. Oh. Wesker, you're pathetic. Well, you shouldn't worry too much, dear. You'll be free of all this anyway. Why eliminate stars? Believe it or not, that's Umbrella's intention. You're just a slave of Umbrella. Smart girl. But I think you misunderstand me. 
The things you mention are nothing. I'll burn all of them along with this entire laboratory. Barry, go up on the ground and wait there. Barry? <laughs> you gotta love Barry. He must really be afraid of Umbrella. You and Umbrella took his family, you bastard. Oh. Umbrella? Well, I used some carrots and sticks to cow him, but it had nothing to do with Umbrella. I just used Barry for my personal interests. Though both you and Barry seem to think I was following Umbrella's orders. What? What are you planning? I guess it's time for show and tell. It's magnificent. For the sake of this thing. You know, I hate goodbyes. <gasps> Barry! Forgive, Faith. No, you're not to blame. It's Umbrella and Wesker. Even if it meant my family, I couldn't bear turning my back on my friends again. Damn it! <laughs> Jill and Barry together in hell. Want a piece of me? What? Premature. No, Barry! You viral cultured freak! And this is our boss fight with the tyrant. Let's see if we can do this without taking any damage here. And that's why we choose to use the Magnum. Unstoppable, basically. I mean, that was only a few more shots than the, uh, than the normal enemies take. Okay. Uh, Jill, sorry. That was careless of me. Wesker. He's gone. First, let's just get out of here. I think I probably should have interacted with Wesker's body first because I think uh, it says something like, what a way to go. A machine used to compile experimental data. Capsules contain a number of creatures too hideous to describe who could possibly be capable of creating such monstrosities. It's a very good question. The terminal looks like it's used to monitor the status of the creatures inside the capsules. This is definitely one of the creepiest things you've ever seen. And we can't examine. Oh, this is different. A number of capsules, each containing an unspeakably ugly creature. We can't examine the tyrant, unfortunately. So let's check over here. A panel used to release the emergency electronic lock. Release the lock. The electronic lock has been released. All right, and that's that. I have to admit the dialogue for Wesker in that final sequence is kind of confusing. 
because it seems like he, he flip-flops between working for Umbrella and then working on his own. So I guess the answer is probably a little bit of both. Wesker must have set it off. Let's hurry. self-destruct sequence that we need to get out of here before it goes off. Although there is no countdown timer, which I suppose it wouldn't be the first time this game had a, a countdown timer that wasn't represented on the screen. Importantly, the electronic lock is released, which it means that we should probably go get Chris. Here's a bunch of chimeras. At least I'm hoping that's what that means, and I didn't completely miss a step here. And it is, it's a little sad that uh, Barry is with us, but isn't represented following us, which is strange because there have been a few sections where Barry did follow us, but oh well. If ever there was a time to hustle down the stairs with the, uh, the glitch, it was probably then, but Jill's fine. The lock is released, yeah. Jill. Sorry about the wait. So everything's taken care of? Well, almost. Now let's get the hell out of here. But at least Chris is with us to follow us around. Let's see if Chris can do that. Oh, too bad. scary actually if Chris ended up also gliding up the stairs I would, I would think I was playing co-op with somebody without realizing it and we still have some rooms to go oh sorry Chris <laughs> I forgot there was an, a room an item in your room But once again, we can practice our uh, sliding. There's a blaring alarm and a, a voice clip that is very short that's replaying over and over again. Uh, I definitely never came in here, actually. A dried up commode. The bed is covered in filth, because I would have remembered this cool uh, camera, literal camera angle of a camera following us. That's really neat. It also looked like the uh, field of view was a little different. It kind of looked like it had a little bit of a, a fisheye lens. That might have just been my uh, my imagination, though. Okay, so I think our goal here is just to make our way back to the way we came, but I do want to see what I missed in here, and hopefully there aren't a ton of enemies. It's probably a, uh, it's more hidden. It's probably not represented on the map in a shelf or something. Yeah, no enemies in here, that's good. Nothing here either. Thanks, 
Thanks for bearing with me. It's probably on one of these shelves, but you'd think that there wouldn't be. There it is, a first aid box. And now it's clear. Let's see if it's even a spray for us. Nope. No such, just one single green herb. That's mean. In the very last area of the game. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. And there's that one hallway, too. And that's laboratory before. That's in the room with the... That's the letter down to the one with the tyrant, isn't it? Interesting. Also, yes, I am very brazenly assuming there isn't a real countdown timer here. Yeah, so let's head back that way then. Although I'm going to go ahead and save. Just to be on the safe side. Okay, one room left. As there's a ton of background noise and planes flying overhead, unfortunately. Hopefully that isn't coming too, through too clearly. That long period of silence when I was saving just now was because one was just roaring right over and it was beyond loud. That's what I get for recording at atypical times that I usually do. So now we need to take the elevator down. Okay, thank you, game, for letting me do that. Uh, something I haven't mentioned, but something you might have noticed, is looking at the map, uh, elevators, uh, the, or the rooms where we have things to pick, to pick up still. Also, yeah, I walked right by these shotgun shells rooms where we have to pick up things still are a, a dim red and the and elevators are represented by a very bright red and I, I feel like they probably could have just used a different color to represent elevators because it, it, it makes me feel like I'm, I'm missing something save room again and then do one final check through of the map to see if we missed anything. Starting with the mansion, that looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Alright. Going to the courtyard, that looks good. 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 Residence, also good, I think. Altar. The lab has one more hallway left. That's an elevator. Okay, we are all set, which means I'm going to go ahead and deposit these shotgun shells. Now I 
actually going to take out the grenade launcher, put in the normal shells into it, deposit the acid rounds, and use up our last ink ribbon of the game. A full 30 out of 30 saves. Now that's a 100% run if I've ever seen one. invisibly in tow. Let's head back up those stairs. I think the issue with the battery pack and owl road, I think the issue with the battery pack I missed in that chimera room is that the room is very red and it's a red item. It did have the shiny on it though so I don't really have that much of an excuse but if I did have an excuse, that would be it. Oh, you know what? I used my last save in the lounge. I probably should have used it in this first save room. That's okay, though. If, if we need to reload, it's just a, a short jog. our friends. Hi, friends. We finally get to go through this door that was locked before and get some shotgun shells that we don't need. Although we, we might need a healing item, so I do accept this. Will the game be nice? The game is still not nice enough. A single green herb. I wonder if these are randomized. At least Jill remembers that the uh, the radio doesn't work this time. I wonder if the contents of those healing items, those healing boxes, look at what you have, maybe, and if you have a lot of healing items in your item box or something. Or it maybe it just looks at your health if it's randomized because it seems silly to them. At this stage of the game, it would just give us one green herb and a fuse unit on the ground to put into the wall right next to it for some reason. Damn it! We're almost there! Jill, you just get in contact with Brad. No! We can make it. Jill, ladies first. Chris! Would you let me have my moments too? All right, we'll rendezvous at the heliport. I love that effect of the lighting coming down with the elevator. And now we have a timer of three minutes. As Jill tries to get to the heliport to contact Brad, Oh, we got that achievement early. So that's the reason I was so... Uh, oh, we're on a timer, so I should probably... Uh, that's the reason I was so gung-ho about uh, trying to make sure I picked up every item and had every map area green, because I wanted that achievement. So cool, glad we got it. Right here are these signal rockets, which we can take over here. I don't think we actually have to uh, take it over here, but... For effect, I'm going to stand in the middle of the, uh, the uh, landing pad here. misfire. Poor Barry 
battery's really getting knocked around. Oh, we have to reload. Oh, we used a full clip, so why don't we switch to the grenade launcher? Oh, that's not good. Oof. Let's get absolutely yeeted. Oh, and we're wounded. Oh, we're in danger, actually. So we use that first aid spray. Oof. We're probably in danger again. But Barry's helping us out. I think we were about to die right there. And we might still if I'm not fast enough on this. that was the, I want to say at least, that was the true ending, or at least it's the good ending of Resident Evil, where we were able to save both Chris and Barry. That game is so good, but before I start talking about it and gushing about it a little bit, that was by far the most, this is my fourth playthrough now, that is by far the most intense final encounter I've had <laughs> with the Tyrant. He was moments away from damaging me, and then he deflected the first rocket, and I had to hit him with the second one. So, geez, I'm really glad that worked out, because he looked like he was mid-swipe, ready to just completely kill me, and I think I was already in danger, because I took damage again, but it ended up working out. So, yeah, that was Resident Evil. This game and this whole series occupies such an interesting space in video games, I feel... It's, there's really nothing quite like it, even among other survival horror games. It's, it's a really great game from on all sides, really. I mean, the story is kind of lacking, especially when you realize how much a lore has been established in the other games, other games that followed it up. But there's a reason that it's such a classic, and there's a reason that it started such a successful series that is now finally getting a, a resurgence not just overall in people's minds, but in my mind too, obviously, because like I said at the beginning of the playthrough, I never, uh, I was never really into Resident Evil despite a few games here and there, like 5 and uh, 7, but Village really it cemented it. And I went ahead and uh, skipped to our results page here for uh, 8 hours, 11 minutes, and 52 seconds, 40 creatures dispatched, 76 ammo used, all 30 ink ribbons used and 20 health items used. And our final achievement, passion for fashion for unlocking all of the costumes in the games. Let's go ahead and save over this for our clear data. I want to see what that costume is before we end off. Okay, there's Chris. He doesn't have any new ones. Oh, it's her Resident Evil 3 outfit. That makes a lot of sense. And there you go. There you have it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed Resident Evil as much as I enjoyed playing it. This is probably one of 
the most fun playthroughs I've ever done just because it was so much fun to think about all of the uh, different keys and items and when I got them, where to take them, or if I remembered the key, or if I remembered the solution and not the key, I would wonder where uh, the key is, even though I already had the solution. So it's just a very interesting process thinking about the different parts of this game and how they fit together. And when things come back to you or when you remember things immediately on the spot, it's it's so much fun. And th that made the playthrough so much fun. So uh, I'll quit rambling now, but thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.